the NFC and the AFC championship was uh, yesterday. And we got them results um, sticking to the plan. Vince, give me the the two scores from yesterday. All right. So a full slate of two games happened uh, on Sunday, January 29th. AFC title game, Kansas City outlast Cincinnati 23-20. And the Philadelphia Eagles beat the 49ers 31-7. Of course, we're going to discuss all of that uh, right now, actually. Yeah. So... Uh, was uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with uh, Eagles 49ers. Uh, let's start there. Um, Rip definitely the did off. not did not. This game was definitely not what we expected. I think we all expected something a little bit tighter. Um, 31-7. Um, 49ers just absolutely melted down. Um, in that final fourth quarter, not a good look. Uh, we'll break that down in a second too, but uh. Vince, I got to start with you. Um, give me a, a summary of, of 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 the game, how you're feeling, and then uh, we'll turn it over to Tyler and get his rebuttal. And yeah. then uh, we'll have a lot of 49er and Eagles talk uh, throughout this episode. So just start me off there. All right. So obviously the first uh, major point of contention that happened was the fourth down conversion by Devontae Smith. Uh, replays just ended up showing that he and he actually didn't catch the ball, but the Eagles were smart and got to the line real quick and snapped the ball before the 49ers could challenge. And then, uh, then, then we fast forward a little bit. Brock Purdy gets his um, elbow blown out basically uh, on a hit that ends up causing a fumble. Um, it was initially ruled an incomplete pass, but um, they uh, the Eagles did challenge and that one was um, overturned. So that's a fumble. Brock Purdy is out for the game, but wait, he wasn't because uh, the replacement quarterback, Josh Johnson comes in the fourth stringer. For those of you keeping track at home, uh, he comes in, he gets concussed. And so Brock Purdy without a ligament in his elbow has to come back in and basically hand the ball off for the rest of the game. He does attempt, I think one pass and it goes for like five yards. Uh, basically as soon as Brock Purdy left the game the first time, uh, I, I, I lost a lot of hope. I was not exactly planning on the 49ers win at that point. Um, uh, it was seven, seven, and then it was not seven, seven, uh, going yeah. forward. So, um, I mean, I, I don't know. There's only so much you can do. Uh, like, I, I I get the feeling of dejection, but when it's a when it starts to turn into a blowout and there's nothing you can really do, you have a guy who can't throw the ball at quarterback, and he's only out there because there isn't an emergency fifth string quarterback. Uh, yeah. So, I, I w- what do you want me to say? I mean, it sucked to watch, but it was easier for me to digest it happening because I knew there was no chance. You know, it's not like the Bengals fans that are like pointing out, oh, if only this happened or if only yeah. that happened, like me, it's like, shit, uh, like I knew it was done. Uh, there's there's nothing I can really point to that says, you know, it, what if Brock Purdy doesn't get hurt? I mean, that's that's what I can point to. But he did. And that was the end of it. So just to interject Tyler, a little bit here, oh, go ahead. Uh, just to interject real quick before we get to Tyler. Um that uh that touchdown at the beginning of the game that the Eagles got and then you know scrambled to line up and and score um the game was not decided there you no. know and then even the quote unquote questionable penalties and you know the the fire that the referees got under this game i don't think any of those penalties or replay issues there's some talk about uh the NFL didn't have the referees didn't have a certain angle until later and Fox had that angle and this and that. I don't think any of these penalties or anything of that nature came down. Uh, none of that decided the 49er and Eagles game. Um, no, no. The I Eagles flat out won. The 49ers were, you know, they lost their quarterback. Who knows what happened if he was healthy, Brock Purdy. We don't know. Um, unfortunately, I think the only thing that I was robbed of, because my dog was not in the fight, uh, we were all at home <laughs> you know, watching, watching from uh, our boat in the desert. Um, and uh, is 
we wanted something a little bit more entertaining. Um, so that that's the what I was robbed of is a more entertaining game. Uh, Tyler, uh, take your victory yeah. lap. Yeah, I was literally about to say, uh, start <laughs> start circling. Uh, uh, take your lap, bud. I, I just want to point last week's episode. I told you guys that this game was going to be won on the line. It was going to be won in the trenches. And that happened to be the case. Um, you know, we, we kind of had our way on fourth and ones and fourth and twos, but um, reality, 49ers defense was a solid defense throughout the whole entire game. You know, what happened is they just got worn out. They got worn out by one of the best O-lines in, in, in NFL right now. And um, I think once you got to the red zone, I think, you know, the 49ers seemed to either give up or you know, the fight wasn't there on the red zone. And that it, it just... I think it just boiled down to winning it on the line there. Um, I do want to point out that Josh Johnson has to probably be the worst horrific backup quarterback I have ever seen. How are you on? How dare you insult Nate Peterman like that? How, how, how does Josh Johnson have 10 years of football experience, 13 teams and doesn't know how to throw the ball. You're telling me that when they got Josh Johnson in what week, I don't know, 10 or nine, something like that. When they got him, uh, it was later than that. It was like third. It, it was, it was when the Jimmy G injury happened. It was the next week. So, so. so you're telling me that Jimmy G got hurt. You're on your third string quarterback and you don't let him practice with any of the second teams just to get some reps in, in case something happens to Brock Purdy, like your last line of quarterback, you don't do anything. So I, I think that was the most embarrassing thing. And also to, um, I'm not here to criticize Shanahan on not being able to call the, the challenge flag because obviously he didn't have some angles. You know, what I am here to criticize him though is Josh Johnson is so bad. You got a guy who literally can't throw the ball forward that you don't call one timeout to try and figure something out for him. You go into halftime with all three of your timeouts and you can use a single one, you're bleeding out. You got to figure something out for this guy. And and Shanahan just basically deer in the headlights as soon as Purdy went out it was deer in the headlights for him and I I will criticize that for him um again Christian McCaffrey was the best player on the team I mean a best player on the field hands down definitely the best player on the field and he only rushed for 84 yards and had a touchdown I mean Jalen Hurts wasn't great you know he went 15 of 25 only threw for 121 yards you know uh Miles Sanders had three had two touchdowns right but one was, you know, that missed call that turned into that, you know, then we get a penalty from the 49ers, which then leads us to be able to get the second touchdown for him. So it wasn't like we blew the doors off. We played a great defensive team. We just wore them out. That's basically all that happened to it. And then, you know, I'm not going to speak offensively because you didn't have a quarterback. You're basically playing with your hands tied behind your back. So I don't, I told Vince, this is that you play whatever's in front of you them the breaks. That's all it is. And unfortunately it didn't go the 49ers way. It didn't go the way that fans wanted it across the board. Obviously I'm ecstatic and ecstatic to go into the Super Bowl. but would I have loved to have played a, a full strength, healthy 49ers team? Yeah, absolutely. But that's just not how it happened. That's just not how the book was, was written. And again, I will see you guys. I think next year we'll see you guys. So I'm not oh, yeah. worried about it. So yeah. And you know, it's going to be uh, interesting when this 49ers team is led by Tom Brady. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, no, yeah, um, I'm hearing that that call is happening. A lot uh, faster than I thought. No, I, I think you're absolutely right, Tyler. The, um, the Eagles offensively were, they were blowing teams out the, you know, not just out the stadium, but out the damn town. You know, they were blowing teams out. Uh, they were running them, running them out. We had Suriani you know, running down the field, mad dog in the camera, like he's a player, you know? <laughs> um, you know, and they didn't really have their best game. And the time of possession battle was so heavily favored uh, to the Eagles. And they, they, um, I think if that was any other defense, it would have been, you know, a 50 burger, um, you know, it would have been something ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, we were robbed of a more entertaining game who knows? Maybe, maybe it's closer. Maybe the Eagles still win. Um, but maybe it's by a field goal. Maybe it's by a touchdown. Um, but, uh, fans were robbed of, uh, something that was more competitive. Congrats to the Eagles. Um, you're the one Eagles fan this week has shown any sense of, uh, uh, decency 
and uh, participation in uh, civilization. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your service. The, you. Video, <laughs> the videos out of Philly are kind of wild. You, yes, you uh, should see the bus um, stop outside my house. You know, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there's been some some folks in the uh, in our local media market posting videos and sharing their their situation by by uh, going to Philadelphia and um, I don't know, man. It that's a that's an ugly look for any sports fan base. Is um, you know we we got to stop with the uh, the physical violence, you know, spitting on people, throwing food on people, and uh, racial slurs. And that's not that's all fan bases. You know, I'm not going to pick on the Eagles. I'm not going to pick on any particular fan base. Um, there's always a margin of of fan bases that do this. Um, but we got to we got to we got to be better society. Um, you know, it's, it's sports. It's what's supposed to bring us together in, in, uh, competition and, and see the best in one another. Um, but some of those videos coming out is, is an ugly look and, uh, but all, t- all teams, all fan bases have that. Um, but it's, you know, come on, if you're listening to this, you know, you don't need to treat your fellow fan like that. Maybe they're a fan of a different, uh, region or a different team or a different player, but, you know, we don't really need to use uh, racial slurs to get our point across. You know, we could we could talk smack and have fun and, and be be respectful at the same time. So, um, yep, we're all human I, beings first, right? Absolutely. I do, I do have a thing. I, I jumping back to the 49ers game, I, I had a question for you, Vince, and, I, and I'm curious as to what you think here. Okay. Um, obviously, the, the Eagles defense got after it. You know, we we caused three fumbles and had a couple only sacks. three sacks though, right? Yeah, only three sacks. So my question to you, though, is that Nick Bosa, this whole entire playoffs, not just the Eagles game, but every single game in the playoffs, hasn't recorded a single sack. Being your your defensive leader, is that telling to you? Does that does that bother you? Um, well, I think obviously in the playoffs, the teams are better, um, better competition, uh, you know, better offensive lines, you know, generally speaking. Um, I would say that it doesn't concern me nearly as much um uh because they're gonna focus attention on him i just like uh you know getting an extra man on him the entire time he he might have been like uh i mean we saw him get taken out a couple of times uh by by like you know rogue tackles and stuff like that like while he's on the sidelines so uh maybe he in this game in particular maybe he's just like didn't have that extra gear you know like it was taken uh, out of him when he got hit by rogue players at this point. I don't know. Um, I was doing also, a quick, uh, I was doing a quick stroll through a uh, 49er Twitter and Reddit, and uh, looks like uh, quite a bit of 49ers are fans are are out. The Javon Kinlaw experiment is over. Um, so a lot of people yeah, he are had like, a you know, terrible game. Yeah, yeah that uh, Bosa needs help. You know, if you're putting you know like vince said you know you're putting an extra blocker and sometimes two extra blockers like sometimes he's going against three guys right you know like you might as well take their best defensive player out of the game and um you know run the ball away from (laughs) you're gonna do things to get away from them yeah Uh, Uh, uh vince you were gonna make another point um also, I was going to push back and say that Fred Warner is the best Niners defensive player, um, not Nick Bosa. Uh, but that's also personal preference because I like linebackers more, and I also don't like uh, Confederacy fans more. I think so there we are. The, the problem with Fred Warner is that I don't think he gets talked about enough. I really don't. In, in national media, mm-hmm. he is a great defensive player, but nobody talks about him. They always well, they, talk about I mean, Bosa. every time they first talk. First team all pro, right? Didn't he well, make they, the they first talk team all about pro? him? Like I, I've 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 seen like ESPN like anytime they start talking 49ers defense they'll talk about Bosa but then they're also talking about Hufanga and they're talking about Fred Warner as well so I don't, I don't necessarily know about on a national know. scale they definitely I mean obviously we we talk about it more over here but I yeah. don't I don't think as much like no, Bosa no, is the is the focal point well he's the focal about. point because he has the 18 and a half sacks that's what it really comes down to and that's this year but um I I. I I, anytime I've heard national people talking, Fred Warner does get brought up enough, uh, like, like, like a bunch. He probably should be brought up more, but that's only because he's, you know, an all pro level linebacker and he's being brought up at the level of a pro of a regular boring pro bowl linebacker. 
So I, I just, I just think he's not I, being yeah. mentioned as a defensive player of the year. Right. Yeah, and, like that's and, and kind he, of like a, yeah. Kind of a little bit of a separation where he's, is he a D part, defensive player of the year part, type of player? I, I don't know that he will, he'll ever be because a lot of the times those DPOY guys, um, it, it, there there's one particular thing that really puts them over the top. Like with Nick Bosa, it's the sacks or yeah. sauce Gardner in New York, the jets, who's going to win the defensive player rookie of the year. Obviously it's the interceptions. Um, Fred Warner does a little bit of everything, you know? So, um, so the, the numbers itself that the, you know, he's got like, you know, a, a triple double, basically he's get, he hits all the categories a bit, but he doesn't like Excel. It's not like a 50 point triple double. Like it's all like, it's a Draymond triple double, I guess is what I'm getting at. It's a little bit everywhere all over the place, but yeah. All right. Any final comments about this game? I know we're going to be talking probably a little bit more about 49ers and Eagles well, a little bit I, later. I think, I think we should just uh, dive into the Brock Purdy injury update right now. And the latest that we've heard is that it's a uh, UCL. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a ligament in the elbow injury. Um, it's uh, it, it's ruptured. I believe they said, and they're hoping to be able to repair it. And it's a six month turnaround. If they have to replace it, that's Tommy John surgery. And that, is like a 14 month turnaround. So well, it's torn. So, I think they're yeah, it's have it's to. torn. It's torn. So it, they're hoping well, to repair I, it. I did, it, I did they have hear to go a, in and look. I did hear a doctor, they brought some doctor on onto a uh, a podcast that I was listening to and they're saying that the the surgery that he, Brock Purdy would get would probably put him like 6 to 8 months mm-hmm. to recover. Uh, because it, it is a little bit different than a pitcher recovering. Yeah. And it's because when a pitcher is throwing, there's like these mechanics of how you're twisting your arm and, yeah. you know, where yeah. throwing a football and a baseball is, is different um, oh, yeah. on what you're yeah. trying to do and how much torque um, that you're putting on the elbow where throwing a football, you know, any throwing is an unnatural motion for the human body. Like our body is actually not designed for it but the the torque from throwing a baseball and the torque of throwing a football is vastly different. Yeah, the stress um, point is is it's, way it's different. The, it's, it's the way same different. surgery and recovery that I think Josh Allen went through or maybe the, the injury that Brock Purdy has is is uh you know it was due to the hit and his arm trying to go forward and being pulled backward so it's um a little bit different than what a what a pitcher would go through but from what I heard, it was six to eight months of, uh, so he should be ready to go in six to eight months. Yeah. Well, I mean, six know. months, six months from now, let's, uh, so let's just count. It's the end of January right now. So end of February, March, April, May, June, July. So you're talking the, uh, he might be best case scenario ready to go when the, uh, preseason games start. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. obviously they're going to want to get him into some of those and probably play a little bit longer than you'd hope. And if that's, that's all assuming he's on a good timeline, a six month timeline, anything longer than that, you're being pushed into the regular season. There goes that, uh, Trey Lance trade, uh, talks that we had, you know, toyed around with beforehand. I, um, the only way Trey Lance gets traded now is if you bring in somebody like Tom Brady. You know, like, I, like I don't Sam had joked about. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they trade. I don't think so either. either. Do. And I, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I don't see because you got to look at point. whatever veteran quarterback you bring. Let's say it is Tom Brady. You got to look at it as a one year, as a one year deal, right? Like, even if you sign him to a, a two year deal with, uh, maybe that's an option. As a franchise, you're probably looking at it as a one year deal because you're hoping that Brock Purdy comes back. You're hoping Trey Lance comes back. And one of these young quarterbacks can, can, you know, keep the job and hopefully stay health healthy. Yeah. It's a, essentially a band aid until yeah. everything heals in terms of like having more quarterbacks who can do the job. A lot of people think that the 49ers window is about two years, give or take, you know, because of how Kittle is, is always prone to, to be susceptible to an injury you know, um, we don't, how much more longer do you have on the wheels with, with Christian McCaffrey, you know, as a running back, 
So a lot of people think that window is about Debo two, as well. Years. I mean, you know yeah. how how Debo plays the game, and even uh, Brandon Ayuk to a certain degree, like how much uh, abuse they, how physical they are, um, and then salary cap. You know, like you know the the NFL is a salary cap league, as we all know. Um, how are they going to keep this entire team together? Where you know you're going to have young guys up for contract, like uh, you know we we talked about the linebacker position. You know Fred Warner, he's going to be up for a big deal. Um, so how do you keep all of these pieces and retain talent that's still young and healthy and keep it all intact? So they're going to be up against it in the next few years. And the good thing is, is um, you know Shanahan has shown, and so has John Lynch has shown that they're they're able to kind of pivot on the fly and recognize, uh, identify guys that fit into their system. So that's, you know, hopefully they can do that again. And one last note for me on this one is that I've been noticing that Brock Purdy uh, until the announcement was about uh, today about his elbow. Um, he was getting a lot of flack of, you know, could he have played that game? Did he, you know, not man up and do it? And I, I think that really bothers me. Um, you know, the same people who are saying this, the same people who, you know, call out sick when they, their nose itches funny, right? So to call on another man's toughness, I think is, is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Um, so if you can't play, you can't play, you know? And, he was I, he was physically incapable of throwing a ball further than exactly. five yards, you exactly. know? Uh, he, he told him that, I mean, he was trying to warm up. Like how many times did we see on like a, a Twitter timeline or they talked about it like during commercial breaks, uh, Brock Purdy was trying to throw, trying to do it. And he just couldn't do it. It wasn't there. And that's because the UCL was gone, you know? Yeah, so exactly. uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it's ridiculous to try to say that he couldn't. And he did go back in there. He did throw another, mm -hmm. a, a, a four year, a four yard pass to Christian McCaffrey. And that probably hurt like hell, you know? Oh, so, I'm sure. So I, um, anybody criticizing Brock's toughness can go take a long walk off a short pier. I'm done, you know? <laughs> You're listening to the SVT podcast. Subscribe on YouTube and hit the bell to get alerts when we post new episodes. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at SVT Sports Pod. Slide into our DMs. We would love to interact with you.